What is happening, Sports and More fans? Welcome in. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to give you guys the content that I have been wishing to be able to give you. Um, you know, a lot of circumstances in my personal life uh, dictated that. Um, I just lost my mother. Uh, and that was very hard and still is, um, but I'm here today to talk about Kobe Bryant and, uh, the terrible, uh, helicopter crash that took him and nine other people, including his daughter, um, but I want to talk about Kobe Bryant, the basketball player. Um, look, I love Kobe Bryant, and I think he was the absolute last of a certain breed, uh, the breed that didn't come from AAU, that didn't play in all these tournaments where everyone's friends, where everyone knows each other, where everyone's all chummy chummy with everyone. That's the NBA that we have today. And it sucks. I, 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 I'm I sorry. I, I don't like it. You know, Kobe, he didn't want to shake your hand. He didn't want to, he didn't want nothing to do with you if you're the opponent. All he wanted to do was beat you, embarrass you, and make you look like a darn fool out on that court. That's all he wanted to do. And he spent enormous amounts of time getting better and better ever since his first uh, season when he was putting up air balls as, uh, you know, 18-year-old rookie in the league. And, um, man, Kobe Bryant, the player was was just a complete savage he he wanted not only to beat you but to take your heart when he does it and um and he did that on many occasions until his final season where it was almost like everyone knew that it was his final year and then he kind of hugged dudes and uh joke around with them during the game but and before all that before his last year he never ever did any of that stuff he, he was there for one reason only seek destroy and win and uh I guess that's three reasons, but either way, you know what I'm saying. Um, and it just, it kills me because ever since LeBron's been in the league, this guy's been all about, you know, uh, being real chummy, being real friendly, being uh, just really, there's no there's no sense of competitive, uh, I mean, he's competitive, but there's no sense of, uh, animosity. There's no sense of rivalry. There's no sense of, you know, I want to, you know, not only beat you, but embarrass you like Kobe did, like Michael did, like so many of the greats before did. And... Uh, yeah, and it's not just LeBron, it's his generation, and the generations that, that have followed since, uh, they've only become tighter through AAU and these tournaments where, you know, these kids are all going to be, you know, NBA players eventually, so... You know, they play with each other in these tournaments and, 
they play with each other on all these different teams. And then how can you expect them to be like, you know, they can't be like the old guard that would want to just, because Michael Jordan didn't know, didn't play with, didn't practice with uh, the guys that he went up against, against Isaiah Thomas and against all them dudes. No. Um, same with Kobe. Same with uh, anyone in between those eras. Um, and now we got a whole different era. And look, the game of basketball, as much as I love Steph Curry, and I do, so please do not take this wrong. I think he has hurt the game of basketball tremendously by not only him, but all the really good three-point shooters have hurt the game tremendously because we got dudes just jacking up threes now. Guys that shouldn't have no business jacking up a three are doing it on the regular. And it is, to me, it's killing the game. Uh, there's no, there's no big man battles anymore. Uh, you know, when I, when I grew up watching the game, it was, uh, Akeem Olajuwon and Shaquille. It was, uh, Ewing and Rick Smith. It was, uh, there's a lot of big guy battles down on the block. And you had to be a man to, you know, you had to take, you know, some punishment to get your points or to defend down there. And um, now it's like dudes literally just get out of the way because they don't want to be in that in that poster of getting dunked on or nothing and it's like man where where where's your where's your balls you know where's your at what point did your ego leave did your um, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a different word, but I can't say it on here, but at what point did that leave? I mean, you're worried about being on a poster or a card or something. Come on, man. Golly. At least make them know that you were there. Allen Iverson probably one of the most underrated dudes because he went up against those big guys, Shaquille, uh, Olajuwon, um, Morning, Ewing, uh, all them dudes. When it was real and it was physical and it was tough and they weren't, you know, the only way you got a foul was, you know, to, to take punishment. And today, you can get a foul by just getting the wind blown on you. Or a dude's hand come close to you. And, I don't know, I'm just... I have not changed with the way the league has, unfortunately. And I wish I could have. I, I wish I could still enjoy the game that I once loved. Because... I did love it. And there is great skill still out on those courts. But the amount of uh, uh, 
of rivalry and that stuff is gone. I mean, it's like no pride. That's what I'm looking for. People have no pride. These players have no pride. You know, where, where the hell is your pride at? You're just going to get out of the way? Oh, man. But, yeah, back to Allen Iverson. I mean, he went in amongst these big dudes that would... That's the reason why he was injured so often. It's because he, he wasn't playing in today's game where, you know, if anyone drives the hoop, the big men just automatically disperse. Uh, no, nah, man. He played against, you know, guys that had pride and that weren't going to let him go in there. If he is going to go in there, he is going to... He is going to feel it, and he is going to get his points either by going through them or at the line. And that's why I have so much respect for Allen Iverson, especially considering he is like a 5'11", 6-foot dude, you know, 190 pounds, maybe, 180, probably, uh... But yeah, today's game is, is so much different. And to bring it all back to Kobe, um, yeah, he, he was the last of, of that breed that, that had that, that pride that, um, that, in, you know, that intestinal fortitude, the guts. And he wanted it. He wanted to play hard. He wanted the game to be uh, rough and difficult. And yes, toward the end, he started having, you know, his body started breaking down. But uh, in his prime, his body was great. He took care of it great. And he was... You know, the only player that I could say uh, that came close, he was the closest player to Michael Jordan that I've ever seen in my life. And that's the greatest compliment I could ever give. And um, to the families of all the victims, my heart just... Goes out to all you guys. Uh, you've been in my prayers for ever since it happened. Um, you know, Vanessa, Kobe's wife, and uh, Gigi's uh, mom. You know, you've been in my prayers uh, and will continue to be. And uh, I'm very, I'm very sorry for your loss. And uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's one of those things that, you know, that just makes you realize that this life is, is, is fleeting. So, um, Make sure you tell the people that you love, that you love them, give them a hug, uh, and that sort of stuff. But anyways, uh, Kobe Bryant were, will forever be remembered by me as absolutely one of the greatest and the last, the last of that breed of player uh, that had and wanted a physical battle. And uh, I'd like to see your comments, drop them down below, if you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Um, love you guys, till next time, peace.